Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Go Cruiser from Go Power Bikes. Some of you guys are probably just here for an overview of the specs, so let's go over those right now. Class 2 e bike, 500 watt rear hub motor, locking removable 48 volt 10 amp hour battery up to 36 miles max distance. Top speed of 20 miles per hour. All right, guys, as I mentioned, this is the Go Cruiser from Go Power Bikes. This is one of those bikes that is going to be mainly designed for the urban environment. We've got these slick, almost racing style tires on here. Not really meant for the off road. Could probably handle some well packed trails, things like that. Uh, but I would be more comfortable with this thing if it was on the concrete or the asphalt where, uh, where these wheels were designed to go. Priced in at $1,800, this is one of those bikes that sits in that mid tier range and it doesn't come with any of the accessories like fenders or a rear rack. However, we do have all the attachment points to add that. We've got a spot for rear fenders in the back, front fenders up here, a front basket, and also the rear rack. Um, we've also got a couple of bottle cage bosses here in the step through. The ability to add some of those accessories makes it more viable for a commuter. However, this is probably something where you would just use it to ride around, maybe for fun, short trips, things like that. Right now, they ship mainly straight to consumer, but they do offer a few of their bikes in Costco. So if you got a Costco near you, you can go and check them out, see if they carry any of the power bikes at your local Costco. I always recommend checking out a bike in person, especially some of the stuff you're gonna buy online because there are parts of it where you might think an e-bike is perfect for you and then you get on and you're like oh actually you know what I don't like this or one where you saw and like I don't think that's for me you hop on it and hey guess what that's the perfect uh, it's the perfect e-bike so getting the chance to try them out in person is always the recommendation so the go cruiser comes in this one style one size but it does come in two colors so we've got the black option which is the one here and we've also got the white option so because we do have this really deep step through here this is something that is going to be nice for people that maybe have knee problems or back problems and they aren't able to lift their legs up as high and maybe they want something with a little bit more of an upright riding position. It's advertised as being for riders anywhere between five foot four and six foot two. I think the five foot four mark is probably pretty reasonable given that we've got a 21.5 inch minimum saddle height here and this really low step through. We measured the standover height at 15.75 inches so it's a very approachable size for most people. Now on the six two side I feel like that's probably not going to fit most people around the 6'2 mark. Now, there are some people who this might fit at that size, but I wouldn't recommend anybody maybe over six foot um, this bike, and only because it actually is a lot smaller than I first thought. When I saw it online, I thought it was going to be bigger, similar to the Go Speed, because the Go Speed is a big bike, but this is small, it's fairly compact, and I'm not sure it would be a good fit for somebody at that 6'2 mark. But we do have all the measurements down below, so if you know your measurements, feel free to check those out and see if this bike would be a good fit for you. So the construction we have here is the 6061 aluminum, very standard for all the e-bike frames that we've seen for the most part, unless you're dealing with something that is carbon fiber, and most of those cost a little bit more because they're a little bit lighter. Now, some people have questioned the folding joint, and they do it on pretty much every bike that folds. Um, you get a lot of the older bikes that had these folding mechanisms and maybe they weren't as good but the technology's gotten a little bit better and the quality control has gotten a little bit better so you'd have to really be trying to break this thing if you were going to snap this or break this I mean you'd have to be taking this thing off jumps or dropping off of just overhangs it's you're not gonna do it so the reach here is 20 inches pretty approachable for most people we've seen bikes anywhere between that 16 to 21 and a half range so 20 is a little bit on the longer side, but you do have the option to adjust the handlebar and you could adjust the cant and bring these handlebars back a little bit, giving you an even more upright seating position and kind of closing in that reach distance just a little bit there. And moving over to the saddle, we've got this Velo Go Power Bikes branded saddle here. It's not horrible, um, although it's not my favorite saddle that I've tested out. It is a little bit kind of like a big bump here and a big bump there. And personally, I didn't find that super comfortable. Um, but there's probably somebody that would. 
We've said it before, and you have to find a saddle that matches your butt. Every butt is different, and this one just wasn't a perfect match for me. And then moving up here to these tires, we have got these 20 by 4 inch Kenda tires. A couple cool things about these. These are the first ones that have this sort of like racing style, street style vibe that I've tested, and I really liked them. I thought at first maybe I would lose a lot of the grip, and you really don't when you're riding around on the concrete or the asphalt, places like that. They do have a couple of extras. We do have this sidewall stripe protection here, which we really like. We always mention that if we don't see that. And these ones also have puncture protection built in. The recommended PSI on these is 35 PSI or 2.4 bar. And then we've also got the addition of these reflectors right here in the spokes. So a little bit of the nighttime safety being taken into consideration here. And these tires are connected to this front fork suspension up here. We do have some quick adjustment knobs on these. They also come with 26 millimeters of travel. Now, that's not the most that we've seen, but the places that this bike is meant to go, that is plenty. And that kind of coupled with these big fat tires really adds to a very comfortable ride. And then moving on up to the cockpit here, we've got these rubberized ergonomic grips. Now, we don't have a locking point on these ones. And I've mentioned that on some of the other Go Power Bike bikes. It'd be nice to see at least a single locking point here. So maybe that's something that we can get in the future. Right back here, we've got this hidden bell. Now the inclusion of this bell is really nice because this bike doesn't have a horn or anything else. So this bell is here for safety. Just letting us get attention of any pedestrians or cars that might be in our way. And then right over here, we have got the keypad. Uh, very simple, we've got up, down, and the middle and we're going to hold that down and that's what's going to turn our display on there we go and the display here is going to tell us a couple things it's going to show us battery level it's going to show us the speed that we're going and it's going to show us what mode we're in what pedal assist level and this is also going to give us a watt readout now some of the go power bikes bikes don't have the watt readout so it is cool to see that here as an option the watt readout here can be used just to figure out the efficiency of a bike when we are riding it so if we hit this motor button again, it's going to change the trip distance. So we can either see the trip distance or the total distance here. And then back over here, we can use the up arrow to raise the pedal assist level. And this one comes standard one through five. This is something you can change in the advanced settings, but that's how it comes. And then the down button over here will take you back down to zero. Now, if you hold the up arrow, it is going to turn the light on. You'll see the little indication come on over here. And then if we go out here to the front, we can see that the light is on. Now this front light here, it is removable and you can kind of adjust you know, where it sits on the road. I've got it adjusted kind of for me um, a little bit further out maybe than most people would. Some people like it to be kind of right in front of their tire. The light is definitely bright enough to ride at night and is an excellent safety feature when considering cars coming from the front being able to see you with, uh, with this light here. And we'll pop back up here to the cockpit, turn the light off, save some battery. So the brakes that we have on here are these Tektro mechanical disc brakes. Now on these handles, we do have the inclusion of this little rubberized grip here, which I'm a big fan of. Again, looking at the longevity of this, I'm not sure exactly how long that will take till it peels and you gotta replace it or something like that. However, I like to do a lot of fingertip braking. So this really helps me get a good grip and just, just enough to, to pop the brakes down. And then we move on to the other side. We have got this Shimano SIS thumb index shifter uh, seven speed the bike is a seven speed I'm a big fan of these super efficient super easy super intuitive um, no complaints about this so far um, usually I like to mention when I first saw it, it did look a little bit cheaper um, and they are you know from a monetary standpoint they are cheaper than some of the other Shimano shifters but super easy super intuitive one of the complaints I've heard from people about these is if you're riding and you have to go shift you have to basically change your whole grip to shift now, those are people that are doing more like mountain biking, maybe some tougher trails. But since we're not gonna be taking this on any insane trails, that is not an issue for me. And then right over here, we've got the twist throttle. We do have the inclusion of this safety button. So if we have this unclicked, the throttle doesn't go, which is nice when you have these twist throttles because a lot of times you'll be sitting here, maybe you'll accidentally bump it. And if you're caught off balance, something like that could be painful. But because we have this here, it won't go when we have the bike on. And then right over here to the side, we have got the matching half grip. Again, it's that rubber ergonomic. Now, both these grips don't really have too much play to them, but we do like to see the inclusion of the locking mechanism there.
and heading back on here to the derailleur we've got this shimano tourney derailleur now this is the lower end of the shimano line just under the altus um, but this thing has done really well out of the box we didn't have to adjust anything we hit all the gears nice and smooth and we've also got the inclusion of this derailleur guard which is nice to see and back here we've got the thing that makes it go and that is this 500 watt hay long motor now i'm not sure how many newton meters of torque we're getting out of this but it's done pretty much everything we've needed it to do and again this isn't a bike that we're going to be going up and down insane hills or taking it off road so you know riding around the street heading to the boardwalk you know neighborhoods things like that um, it's done really well no issues with it as far as the acceleration goes it seems to go up to that max speed fairly evenly so with some of the bikes it'll hit kind of the medium top speed and then it takes it a while to get to the top top speed this thing just kind of just evenly heads on up to that top speed so that's nice nice and smooth there and then on the other side over here we have got our adjustable kickstand and we've got our rear mechanical disc brake again these are 180 millimeters both in the rear and the front um, we've got these folding pedals and then up here we've got the rear light now I like this a lot because it is connected to the brake lever so when we go ahead and pull those brake levers it's going to turn on this light let people know we're stopping just an extra safety feature there and then up here we've got our pro wheel cranks measured these in at 160 millimeters and right here we have a little bit of this somewhat of a chain guard more of a guide just because this is a thinner plastic it is going to keep the chain in there a little bit better than say if we didn't have something like that because we've also got the the guide here on the back um, but if you were going to smash this into sticks or stones or anything like that this probably wouldn't fare too well and that pretty much covers it for the nuts and bolts of the bike let's go ahead and take this battery out and talk about that all right so i got the keys let's go ahead and unlock this now the one thing i do love about this battery is that we do have these removable keys which is excellent because if these had to stick in the battery right here this would be in a very inconvenient spot um, but they don't so that's awesome let's go ahead and pull it off it just slides out of the battery track here go ahead and set that down over here so on this side we have got the locking mechanism and we've also got a quick access battery readout here you hold this down and you can see how much juice we've got in there and on this side we've got the on and off and also where we can charge it in one of the cool things about this battery is you can charge it either on the bike here in the frame or you can take it inside and charge it so this battery this is a 48 volt 10 amp hour so it's got 480 watt hours in it uh, lithium ion construction similar to most of the batteries that we've seen takes about four hours for a full charge and you can get anywhere between 20 to 36 miles per charge it does come with a charger charger weighs about 1.4 pounds pretty light pretty reasonable the charger also has a red light green light so if you plug it in and the battery is you know dead or low it'll show red but then once it gets to that full capacity it will light green so i really like that the battery is also not too heavy it weighs in at 4.6 pounds we've seen some of these that are a little bit heavier maybe towards the eight pound range but uh, this is definitely manageable especially to do with one hand and to get that back in here all we're going to do is line up the points with these three notches here slide that down and then snag the keys again lock it in there and remove those keys all right so let's go ahead and test out the walk mode on this thing all right guys so in order to get into the walk mode we've got to turn the bike on we've already done that and to enter the walk mode all you have to do is hold down this down button for about three seconds and then it's going to kick into walk mode now one of the cool things another safety feature here is if you don't have this throttle button pressed in so if we keep it out like it is here then it will not go into walk mode so for some reason you're holding onto that button it's not going to jolt you if you're not expecting it we've got this engaged and now we can enter into the walk mode and the walk mode is about three and a half four miles per hour it's a little quick but nothing too terrible and then if we let go it is going to instantly shut off the walk mode which is nice because we have some where we either have to tap into the motor inhibitors and the brakes to turn it off or we have to hold this down again for three seconds so it's nice that we have that ability to just pull it off and the bike will stop all right let's go ahead and fold this thing up so you can get a look at that All right, guys, here's a look at what it looks like folded up. It does fold in half pretty good. Now, we don't get any sort of height folding. The height is going to go down a little bit because it's 
kind of at this forward slant and then folded. Um, but it's still fairly tall over here. But if you had to fit this into a space where height was an issue, maybe it was just a width issue, this is going to get you some pretty decent space if you had to store this or something like that. Okay, well, let's put this thing together and take it for the ride test. All right, guys, we are back here for the ride test portion on the Go Cruiser. Now, let's test this out as if it were a bike, so we're just going to have it in no pedal assist. We've got the throttle not being used, and we're just going to use the shifter and the pedals, kind of like it was a regular bike. Let's go ahead. All right, we got first gear, shifting to second. Nice and smooth. And then in third, nice and smooth. Fourth, nice and smooth. Fifth, a little bit tougher, but it got there. Sixth, nice and smooth, and up into seventh. A little abrupt, but we got there. And now we're in seventh gear, pedaling along. Now, it's really only comfortable for me to get up to about that 10 mile an hour mark in seventh gear. Other than that, I'd really have to be putting a lot of work into it. We'll go ahead and stop here and test out the pedal assist. I do like though that it does show us our speed as we're riding, um, even if we don't have the motor engaged. All right guys, so let's go ahead and turn the pedal assist on and see what that looks like. Pretty responsive, about half a pedal and we're starting to get that one. Going up to about seven miles an hour, pedal assist level two. It's gonna take us up to about that 11 mile an hour mark. Three. Right around that 16 mile an hour mark. Four. Takes us right to that 20 mile an hour mark there. Go ahead and stop here. Let's put in Pelsis level five and see where we get. Got 22, go ahead and stop for here. Gotta obey the rules, guys. And let's open her up. Comes at 24 miles an hour pretty easily. Yeah, it's kind of cruising us there, right? At that 24 miles an hour. So I believe the top speed is only supposed to be 20 miles an hour, but I haven't made any adjustments in there. So it looks like out of the box, you're gonna get closer to that 24, 24 miles an hour there. Let's go ahead and test out the throttle. Pull to a stop here. All right, so we got pedal assist level. We'll put it on zero. The nice thing about this is we do have access to the full power here. Um, and as long as we have this safety button pressed in, we can use the throttle from any position, no matter what the pedal assist level is. So let's go ahead, up to that five miles an hour, pretty quick. And that 18, 19. Good. Yeah, basically into that 24 miles an hour with just the throttle as well. And we got here pretty quick. Like I mentioned in the overview, we do get here pretty smooth and pretty fast. Yeah, I'm not trying to jump this one. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do a braking test on here. We're going to go in that top speed at 24 miles per hour. Go ahead and throw on the brakes. Yeah, that was about seven or eight feet going 24 miles per hour. So these brakes, they will definitely stop you if you need to. Let's go ahead and get going and let's try to do a little bit more of a controlled stop. We did skid just a bit there towards the end. Wait till we hit that 24 miles per hour. That was a nice controlled stop, no skidding or anything like that. And it was right about that nine, 10 foot mark. 
So it looks like the brakes on these things work really well out of the box. I haven't made any adjustments to them or anything like that, so that is cool to see. So let's talk about the motor noise and the road noise that we're getting. So the motor is a little bit louder than maybe some of the other rear hub motors that we've tested, some of the Bafangs. And then these tires, they have a different style of road noise to them than some of those all-terrain tires. I would say that they're probably quieter, but almost a little bit of a, of a deeper road noise, if that makes any sense. But all in all, it's really not too bad. I mean, I'm cruising around here. Um, the wind's not blowing pretty much hardly at all at this point. And so, There we go. Now the watts that we're pulling right now, we're pulling about 785 watts. Now the motor is rated at 500 watts nominal power, but it has a peak wattage output of a little bit more than that. So you saw we're getting up to that 750-ish. That's probably a reasonable assumption as far as what our peak output's gonna be on this thing. So as we mentioned, this thing doesn't come with fenders. Now, if you lived in a spot where rain wasn't an issue, that probably isn't a really big deal because most of the places you're gonna be riding it are gonna be you know, probably on the pavement and probably well sloped, so they're not gonna be carrying a ton of water on them all the time. So if we're looking at things to add value to the bike, I think coming stock with fenders would be a good value add here. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our review of the Go Cruiser from Go Power Bikes. If you want to know more, I'll put a link to their website down below. And if you got any questions or comments, please let us know down there. We love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.